Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Urban. I'm speaking to you from the Roosevelt Presidential Library uh, here in Hyde Park, New York. Uh, I am the education director here at the Roosevelt Presidential Library. We are delighted to have you here today, and we are also delighted to have a very good friend of mine, um, Karen Hochhauser, who is the executive director of the Jewish Federation uh, of Dutchess County. And we're together today to talk about uh, the commemoration of um, Yom HaShoah, which of course begins at um, sundown tonight. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that, what it means, how it came about, um, why it is meaningful for all of us, not just our Jewish uh, friends and Jewish community, but for um, for everyone. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of, uh, of understanding uh, the need to, um, to stop, take a moment and remember. So. Uh, Karen Hockhauser, Executive Director of the Jewish Foundation of Dutchess County, New York. Thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. Pleasured and honored to be here and, and doing uh, more work with you, Jeffrey. Oh, it's great always to have you uh, on board. So tonight at sundown, um, we commemorate uh, a, a, a solemn, really, um, event, um, Yom HaShoah. And um, I want to be very... Uh, uh, clear about that. It is a is a commemoration. It's not a celebration. It's not a holiday. It is a commemoration. And so, Karen, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what is Yom HaShoah? Absolutely. And, and again, thank you for having me. Um, and it's interesting because sometimes I, I find more now than before, or at least with my upbringing, some people know of the International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and some people know of Yom HaShoah, and, and there is a difference. Um, I'm I'm pleased to say we've done work with you in programming on both those events, but ju but just to clarify, because it's kind of the, the Memorial Day versus Veterans Day discussion. So International Holocaust Remembrance Day is January 27th, uh, the day that the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration and extermination camp was liberated in 1945. Yom HaShoah, which we are commemorating starting tonight, is the 27th of Nisan on the Jewish calendar. And, and that's always interesting because the Jewish calendar is based on the Lunar New Year. So like when we look at Hanukkah, it, it may fall anywhere between the same time as Christmas or Thanksgiving because of the lunar calendar. But typically it's in April, May. And the difference is International Holocaust Remembrance Day is for everyone, regardless of one's religion or ethnicity. Um, it's the day to remember the victims of the Holocaust, and there's many victims. Um, and this this day commemorates all forms of Nazi persecution and subsequent genocides. Yom HaShoah is a is a little different, and and I'll go into more detail about like when and how it started. But it's the Jewish community's day for internal reflection. It was a date that was created by Israel, and provides an opportunity to educate children to unite in passing the torch of remembrance and to honor victims of the Holocaust and recognize the achievements of their survivors. So it's a slight difference, but there, there is, regardless, there is great impact for this, this commemoration. Okay, so the International Remembrance Day is, um, is really commemorating the, the, um, the liberation of the, of the camp and the, uh, the Yom HaShoah is is sort of introspective and uh, remembering the the actual victims and the um, and the and the work and uh, success and survival of their uh, of their ancestors and, and, and folks that came after them. Yeah, is that correct? It is, and it's and it's interesting. If you if you wanted to ask me um, about uh, how did uh, Yom HaShoah come about, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to share because I. I, I will confess, it's not known to everybody, including me, until recently. So, um, I, I, will, I will confess the same thing. It was not known to me until recently, uh, and that was exactly the next question I was gonna gonna ask you. But let me ask you this: So, Yom HaShoah, it's it's tied to the lunar calendar. All Jewish holidays are based on the lunar calendar. So, okay. for example, our Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, this year starts uh, late September, September I think twenty fifth or sixth, um, whereas another year, uh, it may be as early as September 5th. Um, so it's, it, it is 
logical in that if when we watch the moon and it waxes and wanes, it really is very interesting and very accurate. So that's why sometimes there will be variances on what specific day. But for Yom HaShoah, if you look at the, the Jewish calendar, the 27th of Nisan, which is a very specific day, was chosen. But that is when Yom HaShoah ends. And and thank you for clarifying or qualifying that all Jewish holidays start the, the eve from sundown to sundown, or we say Erev of. So while some may say, oh, uh, the 28th looks like it's Yom HaShoah. It always starts the sundown, which is tonight. Yeah, I think it's the fact that it's tied to the lunar calendar is so important because I, I remember a discussion one time where somebody said, oh, Hanukkah is coming early this year. Uh, no, it's not coming early this year. It's coming, coming when it's supposed to come. <laughs> it's supposed to come. It just happens to be a little bit different than when, let's say, Christmas is being celebrated. So um, right. thanks for that clarification. All right. So. Yom HaShoah, um, this introspective time, and how did it come about? Well, interestingly, the, the date was selected by a resolution um, passed by the Israeli parliament, parliament called the Knesset on April 12th, 1951. Now, April 12th on the Jewish calendar was the 27th of Nisan. So that's why tomorrow may be the 28th, but back then, as we discussed, it was April 12th. Um, and although the date was established by the Israeli government, it really has become a day commemorated by Jewish communities and individuals worldwide. Now, the 27th of Nisan, interestingly, falls. It's the week after the end of Passover, which we just finished about the, the story of how we were slaves and we were we were able to be free. Um, and a week before Yom Hazikaron, Yom meaning day. Um, Hazikaron is the memorial day for the Israel Israel's fallen soldiers. So, and and the 27th also marks the anniversary of the Warsaw getting Warsaw Ghetto uprising. Right. So it was very it was very specific uh, chosen by the Israeli government, but it has since become really a, a global day of commemoration. How long did it take for that to to uh, to become more more global? Um, you said 53. It was April, April 53. 51. 51. 51. Okay, 51. So how long did it take for that to to begin to be adopted other places? So in, in, in Israel, they celebrate it one way. And it's, it's a good question. I can say I can say how young or old I am. And I'm, I'm assuming I look much younger than I am. Um, exactly. It, exactly. So, um, I mean, it, it easily, I mean, 51 is not that uh, long ago in relativity. So mm -hmm. I, I know easily for over 50 years, it's, it's, it's been part of the, 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 the global um, commemoration. And why is it so important? I mean, you know, obviously it would have an impact in, in, in uh, Israel, but why is it so important that it, that it, A, it exists and B, that it's being, um, you know, uh, commemorated and, and spread around the world? Right. I almost reverse it. How the question of how could it not be considered important? Um, I mean, That's when you consider that a government, German Nazi government, driven by anti-Semitism, systematically decided and determined to eliminate the entire Jewish population, resulting in six million Jews killed, murdered. One million of them who were children. So that that is that, that's that's mind blowing, and and it's even it's even greater because it wasn't just the Germans, but surrounding countries that participated and facilitated this this massacre. Just demonstrates how human nature can be very evil, and complicit, and 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 to be aware of. You know, you and I have spoken about the, the context and the precursors of how this came to be driven by anti-Semitism. It is absolutely critical and, and crucial that people understand the, the environment that created this. Um, we, we just saw a movie what, and when we'll talk a little bit about what things happening, but there's a movie called The Gray Zone which is very graphic and, 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 and very shocking, but just how the environment was able to be created and how people sometimes do things to survive. But the reality is, why is it important? I mean, you can go with the, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it or, or do something comparable or comparably worse. And so it really, it is not just a Jewish thing. It is really, a, we talk about civic engagement. And, you know, when you have anti-Semitism 
spewing and and being allowed to go unchecked, it, it's 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 human nature that gets impacted, not just the Jews. Absolutely, I, I think um, I love the fact that you turned it right back. You know, how could it not be important? Um, it is so important, so critically important. And you know, when Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, dedicated his library museum here, he, he said that, you know, the, um, that, you know, we're bringing together the papers of the past so that people can look at these things and learn from the past to create a better future. And I think that's really, um, you know, really, really important. And, and I, you know, it is mind boggling. It's, it's, it's inc almost incomprehensible that such evil could have existed and such horrific things um, could have happened. And it wasn't that long ago. You know, we're not talking about something that happened thousands of years ago in the Middle Ages. You know, um, you know, it's something that happened in the in the lifetime of many people that are out there, many people that are are um, you know listening to us. And also, um, the the thing I think that's really important that people tend to forget is it didn't just impact the people of that surviving generation. It impacted their children and is now impacting um, their grandchildren uh, uh, as well. And um, I think that's really, really important uh, for, for that to, um, to, be, uh, to be talked about. Now, you mentioned this idea of rising anti-Semitism and you know, history repeating itself. And somebody once said that you know, history uh, you know, uh, repeats itself and it, you know, it always comes back. And I always, um, someone once said that it's not so much that history repeats itself, but history echoes. And, and I love that because it never really comes back the same way. Um, you know, if you yell into a mind, hello, 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 it's the same word, but it's coming back in different frequencies, it's coming back in different intensities. And that's, you know, I think about anti Semitism that way. You know, um, it's not the, you know, the, the Nuremberg marches and those kinds of things that we saw in, in the time of, of the Nazis, but it's coming back in, in echoes and it's coming back in echoes right here in our own community. Yeah, so. I mean, and, and I'll say, as you said, anti-Semitism is nothing new. You know, if you look historically, you had the Russian pogroms, you had the Spanish Inquisition, uh, and then the Holocaust. It's, I, I always sit there and, and question saying, I, I don't get it. We are such a small, small percentage of the population, 0. 0.00 something. But, you know, when when people need a scapegoat, when people need an other, it, 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 we, it, they have decided that we are we are unfortunately uh, a, a target that people, you know, you've got the papers from Russia that then actually came to the U.S. and, and, and Ford Company replicated those. And um I, I remember asking um, one of our local clergy, um, who's head of the, the Dutchess County African American Clergy Association, and I said, it just it boggles me. He goes, well, Karen, it's because you're the chosen people. And I was like, it was it was very so in, endearing that, you know, that that it was that. But it just boggles my mind in this country. Anti-Semitism is nothing new. Uh, and, and if you look and even during World War Two, if you look at um, in New York City, there was a huge Nazi rally that was in New York City. And, and it, it's amazing. And when we talk about anti-Semitism today, it's not just impacting Jewish people. But what about all the people who fought in World War II? How many lives were lost fighting this dictatorship, this Nazi regime? So it's like it, it, it doesn't only impact the Jews in, in terms of hatred. Hatred is bad for all. Um, you know, and, and, and sadly, it's, it's very, I, I found recently people are not listening to each other as much. They're not willing to engage in constructive conversation. And, and that just leads to, you know, we talk about civic engagement. Um, but for some reason, just, I, I still, it'll be the question I never, it's like, it, it, it is a challenge. Um, I know I have not read the report, but I know the Anti-Defamation League just released their annual report. And if you look at the numbers, um, we had a slight incident um, in Dutchess County. I mean, there's there's different incidents, but there was one in Poughkeepsie. But the most the the, the best part of that slight incident was the, the rallying of the business community, law enforcement local officials, business people, Jews, non-Jews, to basically say this will not happen here. Hate has no home here. And I think that's a key thing for going forward and, and echoing or not repeating itself. You need to have local officials and or regional 
governmental officials stating that this is not a place for hate um, because ultimately people understand that it's not a, I'll say, I, I don't mean to say soft target, but it is not an environment that they can bring their hate. And, and that's something important. And that's something that we try and do in terms of building collaborations at the Federation with as we said, governmental, law enforcement, different collaborations. We love working with you really to help educate and ensure that people have an understanding. Um, you've seen the statistics. How many high school students now don't even necessarily know exactly what the Holocaust was or, or how many people were killed? And it's not just Jews that were killed. So... All right, I'll get off my pedestal and let you ask a question. <laughs> no, it's, great. it's great. You know, it's interesting because, um, you know, you know, the hatred is a poison that it's really hard to contain. And it's a poison that um, that impacts everybody, you know. So, you know, if, if you're if somebody's sitting there thinking, oh, it's just a Jewish problem, um, mm -hmm. it may be for the time period uh, for a short period, but it will eventually begin um, to seep out into the entire community. And where that poison ends, we don't know. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think is very interesting, you, you've mentioned things about, uh, you know, we have to listen, we have to uh, have consultations. You talked about scapegoating. Um, you know, these are all things that, um, that come under this umbrella uh, of sort of civic engagement. And I was talking with uh, Jody Miller, our um, uh, Dutchess County Human Rights uh, Commissioner, uh, one day about um, the uh, uh, the work that we're doing here with, with civic engagement. And, you know, the, the, what the Nazis did was they chipped away at this, um, you know, civic engagement. So, you know, by, by burning the books, by shutting down, uh, you know, community meetings, by you know, silencing people, by disappearing people, by scapegoating, by doing all these things, you know, this is the, this is the mechanism that they use to bring about, you know, the horror that they brought about. And Jody very rightly corrected me and said, but keep in mind, that was the mechanism. It all stemmed from a hatred of the Jews. And that is really at the heart of, of what this was about. And it's really hard to isolate that you know, from one group to the other, because if this kind of thing is going on in our community, it's going to impact everybody. So let's talk a little bit about the work that we've done together um, in, in terms of, of trying to raise uh, awareness of this and trying to raise um, um, you know, the, the, the the profile of the fact that there is a problem right here, um, you know, in our in our community. It's a problem across the world, but it's not something that we're isolated from. It it, it still is happening right here. Yeah, um, and I think that's that's one of the key things in fighting anti-Semitism is is building community. If you know your neighbor, if you know somebody, then when 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 bad things or false things or lies are being said or hatred, but you're like, no, no, but I, I know my neighbor, my neighbor's fine. And what are you talking about? And, and potentially fighting back. But really, it, it is an issue of that. We want to make sure that we engage, we, we educate, we engage. Um, and I and I am I feel blessed that we have the FDR library in 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 our community. Um, and, and between, we've done a number of jobs. I think one of the ones we're, we're very proud of is last November, we did our Never Again is Now Educators Conference. And again, it wasn't about the content of what the Holocaust is. That, that's facts, that's available, but the context and the precursors. Because if we don't understand how that anti-Semitism led to that breakdown of civic engagement, then, then the slippery slide to potentially happening again. And, and I know you know the statistics, but just the number of different, because we, the silver lining of us being having to do it virtually since COVID, we couldn't bring people together as we, we reached educators down in Texas and over to Connecticut and so on and so forth. And then that impact led to over like a thousand youth being impacted. And it was, it was great to see people from not only the social studies history, but also the English and just more people wanting to work together to educate. It's, it's, it's a, I, I hate to say it's a scary time, but when you, when you watch what's going on in the news, I mean, sometimes I, I don't want to watch the news at night because it just it's overwhelming. So there's so much more that we have to do about educating, educating future generations, Holocaust survivors growing up. And I, I grew up, my grandparents moved to Poughkeepsie in 1941. So I'm, I'm a child of this community um, growing up in our synagogue. Pe people had the, the, the tattoos. We knew Holocaust survivors. We knew uh, from Schindler's List, we, we knew members. And there are less and less people who, who are there to tell the, the, the first version 
And you were talking about generations, which is very interesting because the second generation had a very challenging, you know, some of the uh, first generations didn't want to talk about it at all. Some wanted to, but the, there's an, an interesting thing, the third generation, because they're once removed, we found that they would talk to their grandparents and they would get the stories. And, and you and I have worked with this amazing organization, 3GNY, um, and their executive director, Dave Reckis, uh, who is his local grown. Um, and what they do in that organization, and they are open to anybody who wants, for, who might be interested in bringing them into the school, is it's the grandchildren telling the story, the personal story of their grandparents. They are alive because their grandparents survived and they make it very personable and relative and relatable to the youth. And that is a kind of a key thing. It shouldn't be waiting till high school, till you, you, you know, uh, world history. It, it really needs to be brought appropriately, aged appropriately. And I know you've been working on curriculum that's been stellar to offer um, to education. And again, there's, there's a age appropriate ways of introducing it. But if we don't bring it up, it, it really becomes very problematic. Yeah, again, you, you've hit on so many uh, important points. You know, um, it, when, when we talk about it as a history event, if we talk about it as a movement or a time or the Holocaust, it, it puts it at a distance from us. And it really helps us to insulate ourselves from it a little bit. And by doing that, we lose the full impact. When you talk about, um, you know, uh, third generation folks or people, you know, that, that live through it, it personalizes it, right? Now it's not a number, it's not a group, it's not a movement, it's not, you know, it is a real live flesh and blood person who went through this and experienced this and has a message for us that, you know, it, 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 it wasn't that hard for it to happen the first time, it can happen again, you need to be on the on the lookout. Um, and it's funny. I, I have a, a friend, uh, my friend Gary, um, who uh, whose grandparents um, were Holocaust victims. And I remember growing up, um, my grandma was always around, and you know she would do great things for me and everything. And Gary never had grandparents. Um, and I remember asking one time, you know, what, how come you know? And well, they had been, you know, they had perished in the in the Holocaust. And I remember us being on a bike ride one day on a beautiful spring day. And we were on a road, and the, as we were riding our bikes as fast as we could, these you know, the shadows and the sun were going by, and we stopped to catch our breath. And I, I said to Gary, like, how, how, you know, we were having the time of our lives. I said, how could you have such fun when you know what happened? And he, he said to me, he said, well, you know, um, I, I live a good life. My parents told me to, to live a good life because my grandparents couldn't live a good life. And if, if I don't live a good life, it's as if they won. You know, and it was this idea of remembering, but going forward and, you know, keeping those that we've lost close to us, but at the same time, understanding that life belongs to the living and we need to, to go forth and carry those, those lessons, uh, those lessons on. And I also think it's great that you said, you know, the age appropriate, because this is not like, as you said, if you wait until high school, you know, you've lost a lot of time and you have a lot of ground you have to make up. You can, um, you know, when you talk about this stuff, and what we try to do with our curriculum is we try to make it age appropriate. You know, kids right now, there's a big thing about bullying mm -hmm. going on in the country. Uh, well, Adolf Hitler was the world's biggest bully. And you can begin to talk to kids about that. You know, here's a guy who hated people, destroyed people, tortured people, killed people because um, of who they were and because he was a bully. And we have bullies in schools, we have bullies in our neighborhoods, and we can begin to make those kinds of connections. You don't have to go from zero to Hitler with you know, a five-year-old. You can begin to talk about this idea of why it's so important to understand each other, why it's so important to um, talk about things with each other, to understand that you may be different from me, but you're no better or no worse than me. We just have different ideas, we have different approaches, and you gotta really start that dialogue young. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's interesting, you know, how you, you, whatever age, and this is just a story I haven't really shared with much, but it so impacted me when I was in high school. I went I went on a, a youth retreat up in Buffalo and I had all these Buffalo Sabre stickers and um, I came back to school and I was like giving some out. And then all of a sudden everybody wanted one. Everybody, like people I didn't even know were like, and it was just this whole 
mob mentality that just completely swept. And all of a sudden, it reminded me of one of those after school specials where people need to have, this is a key thing. People need to be critical and creative thinkers. That's what we need going forward. We need people to challenge what they're hearing, not just listening to the same people talking about the same things they believe. And, and I mean, that's a bigger challenge in today's society, but you know, it, there are so many different things and, 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 and labeling somebody the other is a very quickly way. The people who didn't have the sticker wanted to be a part of that group so desperately. I'm like, it's a sticker. But in that one little glimpse in high school, I saw how like people just quickly changed and could easily spiral downwards. So it, it really is. And then when you put as, as, as you know, you said, Jody said it, the fact that it was all driven by a hatred towards the other, towards the Jew, towards somebody who maybe had a different religious practice or eating practice, it, it, it it's scary. Yeah, it really, it really is. Um, for those of you who um, uh, weren't at our conference in, in November, let me just give you a little uh, synopsis of what that was. So we had a, um, a full day conference um, sponsored uh, by the uh, Never Again Is Now, and uh, the Jewish Federation was part of that. We were part of that. And we had a group of folks um, uh, who were talking, as Karen said earlier, about the context of, um, of the Holocaust. So we had folks from Echoes and Reflections. We had folks from the Holocaust Museum in Washington, DC. We had um, folks from the library. We had uh, one of our, uh, uh, our Morgenthau scholar who has um, spent two years looking through uh, the material that we have um, about the Holocaust, and we had um, the, uh, the 3G movement folks uh, there as well. And this was all, if, you want, if you're interested in watching this, we have it on our, our library YouTube uh, page, so you can go and take a look there. And part of what we were trying to do, and, and this goes back to what you were talking about a minute ago, Karen, is you, know, you, you have to have these dialogues and you have to have these discussions, but you also have to create the space to have those dialogues and those discussions. And that's something I think that's that's really really important. So you know, because some people say, well, you know, I you know, it's a lot of talk and da da da, you know. But that's how it begins. It starts with people understanding there's a problem, people talking about what the problem is, people talking about possible solutions, people talking about how we can get together to to you know, to raise awareness of this very important. Um, uh, you know, subject and topic. And of course, this was critical to you know, World War II, which was, you know, a huge part of, of the Roosevelt, um, you know, administration and the Roosevelt uh, work and such. So uh, for those of you that, that missed our conference, um, you can you can relive it uh, through our, our, uh, our website. And if you're a teacher watching and you're interested in the curriculum that we put together, um, you can download our curriculum guide uh, from the uh, the library uh, website as well. This has got um, about three dozen primary source documents from our collection uh, related to the Holocaust, and it's based upon um, the um, uh, the film Nuremberg, which was a really important film um, that uh, was made right after the end of World War II, and was banned in the United States for about 65 years. So talk about not creating a space that people could talk about this. And what the Nuremberg trials did was it was um, it was uh, based upon um, the, the evidence that was created by the Nazis themselves, by their own documents, their own films, their own words. And, um, you know, it, it, it used what they had created so that you, you know, you don't have, you can't have people say, well, it didn't really happen. You know, it, it did happen and it happened with the actual material. And so the film is, is in, uh, you can download the film as well. It's broken up into about 14 different sections and you can watch piece by piece, you know, how this whole thing uh, un, unfolded. So Karen, in terms of, of honoring and, and um, participating in Yom HaShoah, um, what, what kinds of things would, would people do? Um. In general, they may have um, a Holocaust themed film uh, with a speaker. Um, we actually did that on Monday uh, with um, showing the movie The Gray Zone, which is, as I said, it's, it's a tough one. Um, and we had and then having speakers. So we had Dr. Uh, Werner Steger from Dutchess Community College come and speak, a good, good friend to both of us. It was just putting the context and explaining some of what happened. So, so that was profound. Uh, there may be community visuals, educational programs. Um, 
a, a talk with survivors. You know, we, we mentioned the three GNY and uh, sadly in our community, one of the, one of a Holocaust survivor just recently passed away, which just, it just takes the heart out of you because it's just such a part. And when you were saying about, you know, the Nuremberg trials, if you remember Eisenhower, he said, film this yep. because, because I know going forward, people are going to not believe what actually happened. Right. Um, but there's also a community, we're, we're having a, a community commemoration tonight, actually. Uh, we collaborate with all the local synagogues and Dutchess Community College. We're having a speaker. We do kind of a ceremony. There's a yurt site candle, a, mem a memorial candle. And what we do is, in, in the past, it was a Holocaust survivor who would light it. Now it's it's the next generation who is who is lighting it. And um, we always honor somebody with the the righteous uh, the the righteous Gentile meaning there there because again this wasn't just about the Jews and there were non Jews who stood up and fought um, and so we we want to honor those as well. Um, I had that honor last year. You guys honored me with that, and it was it was wonderful. And um, you know it, it's so interesting too because once you, you begin to talk about these things, you begin to see how these circles begin to close back on each other. And Werner, um, who you talked about a moment ago, is my old office mate from when I taught at Dutchess Community College. Um, and but, you both worked with my mother, so <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it, it it is all about community. It really is. Yeah. So you, you talked about themes. Sometimes these things are themed. What are what are some of the themes that that tie into this? The the, the key ones you'll hear is you know, never again, never forget. Um, and then sometimes le dorvador, which means from generation to generation, because if we're not passing that along, then then it, then it will go nowhere. As you said, it'll be just some sort of footnote of something that happened in the past, which wasn't that far the past. Right. Um, tonight we have uh, one of the honorees or one of the person who's lighting it. He's 91, 92 years old. Um, his family survived the Holocaust by going to the Philippines. Um, and we, we, we showed that documentary and, and his story was fascinating. But, you know, he's at 91, 92. It, it, it's there. They're not as many. So really, how do we share this this generational story and making sure that it doesn't become a footnote? That's you know, that's really important. Uh, when President Roosevelt was was uh, president, part of the New Deal uh, programs were the uh, the WPA and there was a writer's project and one of the, the parts of that project was uh, what was called the slave narratives um, mm -hmm. and what they did was they went around and they interviewed uh, people who had been enslaved um, and um, uh, you know because at that time it's you know the, the Civil War wasn't as far you know we're further now from the Roosevelt than Roosevelt was from the Civil War <laughs> And so it was called the slave narratives. Of course, today we call it the enslaved people's narratives. And what it did was it talked to folks who had been enslaved. And, you know, when you catch that first generation, when you catch that first experience, there's there's nothing like that. And and I, I love the fact that Roosevelt went ahead and did that because it captured in words and in recordings um, you know, that experience what, that was an important part of, of America. And um, once that's gone, it's gone. And I wish that President Johnson had done that with folks from the from the Great Depression, because um, it would have been a wonderful opportunity to hear about what they had gone through. We lost a lot of that opportunity. And that's why I think this, um, you know, the 3G movement is is just so fantastic, because we're at that critical point where every day, Every day, sadly, the number of folks that you know went through it, remembered it, and can tell us about it firsthand is is diminishing. So it really is important at this point to to make that uh, this, we're going to lose this opportunity in the next five or eight years or so. Yeah, which is which is so it's soul wrenching, um, you know. And and it was interesting because uh, on Monday night when we were talking, so what's happening in Ukraine? I, I mean, there, there's so much terror and horror going on in Ukraine right now. And, you know, back in the day, there, Bobby Yar, Bobby means a, like a Bobby, a grandmother and Yar is a, the thing. And, and they would bring out like the men were all fighting and they brought all the, the elderly, the, the women, the children, and they were just shooting them to fall into this ravine. Yar means ravine. And, you know, we, we were talking about how when this started happening um, and Natan Sharansky, who, who was in jail for many years in Russia, finally was able to emigrate. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase, but he said something about, you know, growing up in the Ukraine. It didn't matter if you were you Ukraine, Russian, Polish, it didn't matter. But if you had Jew on your passport, that would that would prevent you from being into getting into universities or jobs. And he said, 
Now, if you have, um, if you're Jewish, it's a very different thing because there are people outside of Ukraine ready to help, ready to support you. And, and it's a very different environment, which, which is a, it, it's something that we can't stop. It's something that, you know, going on, but um, there is so much more to do. It does get overwhelming. Um, and when I was talking with Jody Miller and, and we said, okay, but let's at least do something in our community to make sure it's, it's a starting point. And, and that's really where I think we we're, we're just, I love when people are like, Karen, just go, go figure out everything, go world peace. And this, I'm like, oh, sure. I'll get right on it. Right. But at least hopefully, you know, with our collaborations and our working with partners and are just trying to, to, to build understanding and resilience in our community, what will lead to at least in this little corner of, of, of the States or the world, a, a better place and more tolerant place and understanding because anti-Semitism sadly is probably not something that's going to go away anytime shortly. No, it, it sadly, it's, it, uh, I'm sure that's true. Um, and, you know, you, again, you made a wonderful point, which, um, you know, it, this didn't happen overnight. You know, this anti-Semitism, it happened over thousands of years. Uh, you know, the, the, the rise of Hitler didn't happen overnight. It happened over dozens of years. And, you know, we can't wave a magic wand and make it all go away. I do like that wand, though. I wish I had one. Well, you know, this this is a one of a kind wand, um, but you can't wave a magic wand and make it all go away. Um, and it it does take time, and it does take those small those small steps. You know, um, when Hitler was was rising with the Nazis, it was a drip, drip, drip. You know, it was a small step here, a small step there, a small step here. And when you look at them each individually. Okay, yeah, it's you know it's kind of a big deal, but it's not a big deal until you take a step back and you see how they connect. Then you see it's a big deal, and um, so just as that's how it took place, I think that's how it's going to have to be disassembled too. It's you know no waving a magic wand, but moments like this, talks like this, small right. events, talking with people, bringing other people in, connecting with other folks in the community. That's how we we, we can um, begin to reverse some of this stuff. Yeah. And, and today it's it's even more scary based on social media. They, they say a, a lie will go around a thousand times before the truth even gets out. Yeah. And um, and that's something that I, I mean, I, I don't have my magic wand to try and to rectify that. There, there's great things about social media, but there's so it's so easy to bully. It's so easy to spread lies. It's so easy to turn people against each other. Um, and again, that's why sometimes I get really overwhelmed. But um you know, I, I, I've got children and I'm just hoping that I'm doing something to make their lives a little better or empower them in order to be able to to stand up if they need to stand up and, and defend themselves or never be, you know, in a situation where, you know, our, our, our ancestors have been. Right, right. And you mentioned critical thinking a moment ago, um, and that, that ties right back into this idea of social media. You know, where are you getting your news? What is your news source? What are the sources of information? Um, and, you know, the more you have of those, the more sources, <clears throat> legitimate sources, uh, the more perspectives you're going to get, the more, uh, the broader uh, a, a picture you're going to get. And you need to learn, you know, we need to learn how to be um, not just, um, you know, information aware and how to get information, but we have to not just have critical thinking, we have to have information uh, thinking, you know, is this, is this, does this make sense? Is it correct? Um, you know, how is it correct? What's the source? You know, is it valid? Is it, is it recent? And all these things need to be, um, be considered. And, you um, I think that's why sometimes it's so difficult to do because that takes a lot of work. It takes more work to, to, to try and evaluate and research than just hitting forward on uh, or like or whatever on uh, and, and sending it, continuing it. Yeah, it, yeah, it is so true. Absolutely. And, you know, many of the themes that we talk about in our curriculum guide um, and we talk about, again, you know, this idea of, uh, of authentic uh, news and things, you know, we have, of uh, documents in this curriculum guide, um, you know, from our collection. And, um, you know, some of them are, are letters from people, um, you know, uh, reports. We have graphs, we have um, um, speeches, we have, I mean, you name it, it's in here. Um, you know, here is this going back to what you're talking about a moment ago, you know, of the of the, the, the Nazi movement, you know, here in the United States, you know. Um, so 
you can, you know, teachers can use this information to see um, from a variety of sources, uh, you know, uh, information about what was going on, and then you can begin to weigh that against other other sources and such. And so, words like critical thinking, words like empathy, you know, scapegoating, these are all things bullies. You know, these are all things we're hearing now that have that direct historic connection back to the time that that we're um, you know we're speaking about. Yeah. Um... And I think it's and again building relationships. It's it's with schools. It's it's with. I mean, there's so much. I'm 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 not going to say craziness to, to 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 de-emphasize the seriousness of it. But so many things that are going on that people hear a word or a term and they say, "Oh, it's oh my gosh, can you believe?" Without even understanding what that term is, which is just again going back to the to the being you know critical thinkers. Um, I could just say for our end, we, we try and work with school districts. Um, I know the Anti-Defamation League has an education department that works with schools. Uh, for example, at locally, Arlington High School has been certified as a no place for hate, where you know the, the students and teachers signed a pledge, 70 percent, and they have to do different equity led conferences, student design, student run, student led. And really that helps create, you know, a, a next generation of, of people who hopefully are not just hearing sound bites. I find so many just look for the sound bite. They take things out of context. They're not willing to do that research to say, okay, what are they really trying to say? It, it, right. it is very exasperating. Yeah. And I, and I want to be very clear that I, I know you are not talking about teachers. You are talking when you say the schools, you're talking about American education. We're yes. not blaming the teachers. Oh um, my God, I love teachers. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I know you're not. I just want to make sure that our viewers are, are understanding that, you know, it Sorry. is. <laughs> No, 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 no. I just want to make sure everybody understands that we're not blaming teachers. This is not something that we can just lay on their shoulders. They've got enough that they're working with. Um, it's something that, as we said, it has to come from the parents. It has to come from community, uh, community organizations, institutions, those sorts of things. Um, when I was a kid, my mother always uh, said, you know, you just remember, young man, when you point the finger at somebody, you've got three fingers pointing back at you. And so it's very easy for us to say, well, it's the media, uh, it's the, you know, it's the schools, it's the this, it's the that. But, you know, who is, it's the corporations, but who are these people? You know, we are the media, whether you tune in or not to tune into this stuff right. makes a difference. Right. Um, you know, what we are, are encouraging our students to learn in our schools, you know, is important to us. We make the difference. We can have an impact on that. But the corporations, what we choose to buy, what we don't choose to buy, that, you know, has an impact as well. So, um, you know, I really do love the idea and, 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 the, and the theme that you're talking about is, you know, this idea of coming together as a community, taking a moment, talking about this stuff, looking at this stuff, remembering who was here and past, and remembering that, you know, those, those, those uh, conditions and memories need to, to continue on um, and they need to be passed on or, you know, that echo that comes back to us will be a hard echo um, and not a, a, a softer echo. So what's what's uh, up next with the, the Jewish Federation? What do you guys got up your sleeves? Uh, well, literally tonight. <laughs> tonight we have our our community uh, Yom HaShoah commemoration uh, at the Dutchess Community College. Uh, we have actually uh, a professor from Vassar who is a second generation going to come speak to us. Um, and and that's their What time, is that? What time uh, is that? At 6 p.m. Um, it is in person if you register. To register, you can come to our website, uh, www.jewishduchess.org slash events. Uh, it will also be streamed because I we're, we're still we're not we're not yet done with this uh, you know, health situation. So it'll also be streamed, um, and that information is also on the web our website. So that that is the the literally in a few hours. So that's pretty uh, next, but. Uh, some of the other things we're working on, um, just in terms of us in, in building community, we're collaborating with the Poughkeepsie Public Library and the Dutchess County African American Clergy Association um, in June to show a movie, a fascinating movie called Shared Legacies. Um, the the um, American uh, Black and Jewish uh, Civil Rights Union and how how back in the day, like when you went down south, the, the rabbis were there, the people, and you know, really together and, and, and sort of it, it it's not as much, so we're trying to revisit that. 
So that's one of our, our collaborations. We're looking forward to doing much more with the, the FDR library. Um, and I, was hope, I was hoping you were going to say that. Oh, um, no, you're, you're, you're part of us. You're not getting rid of us at all. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we will be having another one of our conferences um, uh, this fall, uh, an education conference uh, about this. We, uh, we have planned a Holocaust um, temporary exhibit uh, in our temporary exhibit space, which we were hoping to have had up around about by now, but COVID pushed us back a couple of years. So that's something that we are um, we have in the works, we're planning, so keep that in mind uh, down the line. And my goal is to have our, um, our conference each year leading up to that so that we can begin to help build that community. So if you know any teachers um, that are interested in learning about uh, Holocaust studies and the context and things and material and resources that we have, um, you know, uh, let us know and uh, tell them to, to be aware that uh, we'll have this conference coming up probably again in October or November uh, of, uh, of the fall. Yeah. And, uh, and Karen, you better be there or I'm going to come over there and bring you over. I'm, I'm already there. Bells on my yeah. toes and whatever that expression used to yeah. be. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, because as you said, and I just want to go back because I feel really bad and people take things out of context. You know, um, one of our key things is supporting teachers and, and, and with the content, the easy access so that they can focus on making sure so they don't have they can invest time, you know, where they want to invest time, but just really supporting them that they're they're educating our youth. There, you know, I grew up in the age my mother was an educator and I, I'm an educator in different respects, but it really I always feel it's like my partnership is with the teachers to ensure the children get what they need. Like it, 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 it's it's so, um, yeah, I, I, I love being able to feel that hopefully we're making an impact by helping those who are, who are educating our youth. And, and that's that's huge for me. No, absolutely. I think I think you, uh, you folks over there at the, at the Jewish Federation are doing that. We're trying to do that as well. Um, you know, what we're, we're trying to do is provide those resources. So as you say, teachers have this sort of ready, set, go kit that they can take in and begin to work with this material. Um, you know, they're busy enough as it is to have to track all this stuff down on their own. It's very difficult. So, um, you know, it's a tool, uh, another tool in the toolbox to fight, um, you know, anti-Semitism and to, you um, you know, uh, spread civic understanding and civic values so that we can nip some of this stuff in the bud before it gets um, gets out of control. As always, Karen, a uh, pleasure to, to chat with you. Um, I was, can I throw in one more little plug just because we're talking about interfaith and understanding? Sure. Um, in October 2022, we're actually organizing a community interfaith trip to Israel, which whether you've been there once or whether you've been never, um, it is going to be such a very different and unique opportunity. And when we were speaking to people, um, certain people, the, the GCC, GCAACA, they said, you know, they've been to Israel multiple times. And when you were there and you understand really what the reality is on the ground, it changes. It's a life changing perspective. So we welcome everybody to join us on that trip. Um, I just wanted to share that in terms of expanding cultural uh, experiences and understanding. I see your plug and I raise you another plug. Oh, um, there's oh, yeah. nothing, towards me. <laughs> nothing like being at the place where things happen. So I would encourage folks to come and visit us here at the Roosevelt Presidential Library, um, you know, right here in your own backyard and, uh, you know, walk in the spaces that, that Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt were in and, and learn about the history that we have um, going on right here uh, in the Valley. Karen, always a pleasure to chat with you. And I look forward to working with you for many, many years to come. Amazing. And, um, you know, I, I hope that everyone has a, a very meaningful uh, Yom HaShoah uh, remembrance uh, over the next couple of days. And we will see you again here on Facebook Live uh, down the road. Thanks very much for coming. Bye-bye, everybody.